So today on Time for Anything, we're going to talk about entertainment. So Derek, what do you... What are your thoughts on that? I'm gonna have to steal somebody's PowerPoint here. I have to steal my PowerPoint. So I, yeah, I, I got you on my PowerPoint. Yeah. Derek, define entertainment for us. Well, for our handy dandy definition that we have pulled up right here, it is the action of providing or being provided with amusement or entertainment or enjoyment. Amusement or enjoyment. Yeah, I'm I messed that up. That's okay. Like, what do you think about? Almost, I mean, almost like anything is entertainment, in a way. Yes. You know, like, this sounds kind of weird, but sometimes I'm doing dishes, <laughs> and and I'm almost entertained in a way, because I'm almost getting into, like, a meditative state, because I'm just, like, thinking, and I'm not really doing anything. I'm just doing the dishes, and it's actually kind of entertaining. What kind of feelings are attributed to entertainment? Well, I liked the word enjoyment in that definition. Um, yeah, I missed the definition, I mean, just now, but also when you put it on the yeah. PowerPoint. That's okay, so I, I can could actually just... give this a second go. It's the action of providing or being provided with amusement or enjoyment. Yeah. And that's, that's interesting. That's an interesting definition to me because, like I was saying earlier, I mean, you're not... I guess it, if you're a streamer, are you provided with amusement or enjoyment while you're playing video games? It depends on whether or not you enjoy it. <laughs> because you can be providing, but you don't necessarily have to be provided with the act of providing. Yeah. And that's, that's weird, that it is both the action of providing and also the action of being provided with. Well, because yes. I guess you could say like a pl- an entertainer provider, or an actor. Yeah. A play is entertainment. Right. And then it's whether or not you're entertained. It could be entertaining to do a play, but not necessarily, depending on how you feel about doing a play. Yeah, I remember watching a video on the actors from the new Star Wars trilogy. And they didn't seem like they were very entertained. Uh, but they were the still movie. entertainers. Yes, exactly. Which is, I think, where this definition comes into play: the action of providing, providing amusement or yeah. enjoyment. Providing amusement or enjoyment. Yeah. Which so. isn't what I would really usually think about entertainment. I, uh, at least the way that I've seen it. Entertainment is more of the second part of the definition, like being provided with being enter- provided amusement rather or than providing it. Yeah. Well, I think we've gotten so accustomed to entertainment being a part of our daily routine of society itself that we kind of have lost focus as to why we do entertainment, its purpose, and how it can be used in a positive uh, light for your own life and for other people around you. Yeah. I think a lot of people nowadays need entertainment all the time, whatever that means. You know what I mean? Oh, I have to be stimulated by Reddit or Netflix or watching something on YouTube. People almost can't go without entertainment now. People need stimulation, essentially. Uh, Just a personal example, every morning walking to class during college, I would listen to music or a podcast or listen to something, some entertainment. When I got to class, I would read a book, entertain myself before class. I think that, yeah, it's, it's a very integral part of our lives, and not to name any names, but we have a friend who always has to be entertained. Multiple monitors on his screen while he's playing a game, he's also watching a TV show while listening to music. It's this it's this overindulgence, this this always being entertained by, by multiple sources at one time. Hmm. I think it falls under that kind of distraction category of entertainment to a point where you could focus on one thing and it would probably have a lot more of your attention. You would yeah. actually retain and absorb a lot more from that one thing. Mm. Whereas when you spread yourself out, you're kind of doing too much. You're, the brain it's really is a computer in the realest sense. People don't understand computers, so they don't really understand 
the connection. They're like, oh, yeah, I guess. But it, I think when you realize that if you're trying to multitask too much with your entertainment, you're just kind of, you're electing to basically think about nothing. It's just mm. distraction. Okay. I like this. I think we'll talk about this a little bit more later on with um, talking about productivity. Yeah. But so the original purpose of entertainment, I mean, obviously entertainment has been around since man, right? Since humans have been around. We've wanted to entertain ourselves with games like horseshoes and chess. Yeah, I like this here. Physical art, cave paintings, 40,000 BCE. Were those entertainment or were those messages to other people? Good question. It's hard to say, right? It is hard to say. It's hard to say. I I would imagine, though, whoever did them enjoyed doing them. Mm. Right. Yeah. Which is apparently the definition of entertainment as long as you are being provided with amusement or enjoyment. So. I mean, I definitely think it serves a purpose because I don't think even our early ancestors in 40,000 BC um, were doing things without intent because of the things that they needed to do just for survival. Yeah, almost everything required intent. Right. You, you, yeah, you can't slack things or half-ass things. You couldn't in, afford to. In those times, yeah. no, no yeah. shot. But I do question, they actually, archaeologists found in 18,000 BCE, they found mammoth bone instruments. Uh, at least they believe that the mammoth bone was carved to be an instrument. And I guess my question, I can kind of open it up to you guys, is like, how do you guys think scientists determine how things are used musically like do you think they just try do they look at the structure itself you recreate it and just try it out i mean maybe it's possible i also think it's one of those things where you have this certain knowledge of how do i explain this i think the people that have found them and then have determined that they were potentially used as musical instruments that is what they do they, they look for these things. They look for, oh, this might be an instrument. So us, we might look at it and think, oh, that's just some bones. But they can look at it in a way that they say, no, look at the way this has been carved. Or it's like a we, forensic paleontologist. Yeah, sure. Or, oh, we've seen this in this one region in Europe, and we know for a fact that these were instruments because of what other condi- whatever other conditions so therefore, we found this here, and while we might only have the instruments, we can then determine that they were used as instruments. It's one of those things where we might look at it and just, it's a bone. But to them, they have the, the eyes for it. They know what they're looking at. Right. We should yeah. trust the specialists when it comes to things. Generally, I'd generally, like to think generally, so. generally, generally. Generally. Yeah. Generally speaking, very, I'd like to think so. Very I mean, generally. listen to your doctor when he of tells course. you not to drink four bottles of whiskey every week. But yeah. at the same time, you know, <laughs> live your life. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> do what you got to do. But <laughs> doctors, not to get too off, off topic, just real quick. Doctors are trained to give you a outcome for your input. Oh. So hmm. no matter what, they're, they're going, going to attempt to give you yeah. something. Oh, or they're so going true. to refer you to someone else, and they'll keep going down the line until they figure it out. Yeah. So I think that's what's so cool about yeah. people in archaeology is that they, and maybe I'm wrong, but they don't really have an ulterior motive. Like the, It's their passion. It's what they do. They go out of their way to find these things. Right. And I would hope. I, mean, I would hope. Honestly, I don't know any archaeologists personally. Yeah, I don't know. At least... Nobody that has revealed to me that they are an archaeologist. <laughs> right. Maybe you know one of the only <laughs> for a little while I wanted to be an archaeologist. It's a Didn't cool game. do it. It's so hard now. Yeah. Because there is like one school that actually offers a, a prestigious archaeology program, and then once you get it, you're just a museum curator. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> pretty much. Um, I think it's even interesting that. Uh, we can pull from history actual surviving written music and then apply it to, yeah. I guess, an instrument that would be related to the time, but I, I don't know too much about it. But we did sit and listen to that um, Mesopotamian uh, musical piece that was written in, they believe, 3000 BCE. That's insane. 
and it was melodic and really it kind of so nice. Um, yeah, it was. We could it try had to a link it somehow. Tinge of ominous. It'd be pretty cool for people to hear it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think we could definitely try to link it somehow. Post it's it on cool our website just listen on the episode to. page. I mean, it's it's one of those rare occasions of history coming to life, like the one time they found that really thought to be extinct fish that mm. dates back to millions of years and it's still alive. It's kind of one of those moments where you have a piece of history that you can manipulate and yeah. use. Absolutely. But uh, the question still kind of remains, what purpose does entertainment serve? Because we can look at the history and kind of make assumptions based off our contemporary understanding of entertainment, but does it provide us profit, or is it just kind of a form of escapism? I would say generally, in one broad stroke, escapism seems to define the reason for entertainment pretty well, at least dating back to 18,000 BCE or even 40,000 BCE, because you work hard all day to hunt some animals and you know, you're surviving, you have to decompress a little bit. Stress was a thing back then. Yeah, I wonder how much it was used as a coping mechanism. Think about, you know, you're sitting in the cave with your group and you're really not trying to think about the jaguar that's been creeping up at night, slowly taking your children. If you want your young ones to be at mind, at peace of mind, or maybe even you, you might turn to art or music, some way to or distract just you. Kill the jaguar. Right. It's not that it's easy. Says you. Uh, it's a short. tribe of people. I'm sure yeah. they can handle well, I'm, talking, I'm talking like but, five people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. No, yeah. Maybe and, was, and two of them are hunters, and the rest yeah. are women and children. Children. Yeah. yeah. It could be used as a form of coping. Co- yeah, coping, distraction. I like that word. Comfort. It's important to rest and recover. It's important to have a sort of like refractory period where you can gather your thoughts and decompress. It may not have been useful in the sense that it's not beneficial to survival in the real sense. You are vulnerable. But you can be moving at 100% efficiency all the time. So when you're trying to recover from your daily hunt, it is okay in my mind to sit there and diddle with some rocks and sticks and try to make a beat or something. You know what? Yeah, exactly like you're saying. Maybe you become more efficient by giving yourself that leisure time. Some free time. Yeah. Now, this is in a historical perspective. We're not talking about today where you can have entertainment in the palm of your hands. But look at even prisoners. They get free time to decompress and not be in their cell. It's that same idea. Not think about the fact that they're in prison. Right. Right. I think that one big thing that we're sort of missing here with at least the original purpose of entertainment is storytelling. That's how religion was spread. That's how ideas were spread at the time. There was no written language that people could mailed to another continent, right? It was it was word of mouth, and it was well, there a was form a, of entertainment. Right, there was language, but... Yeah, it, you, it wasn't... The it ability wasn't to communicate as, was very limited. Yeah, exactly. By right, ge- yeah. geography. So, you yeah, you would tell it's, oral traditions, yeah, epics, yeah. novellas. And they usually events. had, you know, a, a message behind it. The Bible has a message behind it. Mm. The stories from the Bible were stories before the Bible was written. They were yeah. word of mouth stories that were passed down. As far as I from, know. From, we don't even know when. Yeah. Right. So, well, it's a form of entertainment. If, if a bard rolled into town and started telling you stories, it's entertainment, and you shouldn't believe it as fact. But it also has that background of mysticism, sort of yeah, explain, but, explaining the big existential question, right, right. which is, why are we here? Yeah. Is there a God? I almost start to wonder if people would have... I wonder if it was a form of keeping sane, in the sense that you don't want to have your mind on everything you have to be doing when the sun rises the next day. You, just like the prisoner in the cell. Yes. And, and you also, escapism, the yes, broad stroke. Exactly. Yeah. And you also don't want to sit there and do nothing. You want to do Same something time. that fills your time, that makes you feel happier. 
right? it's just so hard for me to conceptualize because it's not a discovery like fire. It almost is though. It's you had but to discover. It, but it's music. not nearly as metaphorical. Like the idea of entertainment had to be developed over a way longer period of time than just you just jump to cave paintings. Right. That's like, that's why I sort of brought up that storytelling word of mouth because I think that was the original form of entertainment in the sense that most people. Uh, I, well, honestly, I can't even... Well, our language but, would develop. But let's, yeah. let's just take cave paintings, right? As a form of entertainment, it might be entertaining to make them, but if you live in that cave, you can only look at them X amount of times before they just become part of the wall. Yeah. My so, paintings in here have just right. become part of the wall. I and, still right. see them. And maybe they're, they're were... still there, just yeah. like, you know, the posters are still there in your room when you walk into your room. Yeah. But they're just part of the room at that point. Yeah. You're not sitting there like in an art gallery looking at... And, and, and I think that's where storytelling, word of mouth comes in, because that was something that that was entertaining and didn't last. And we like also only have maybe a few of cave paintings that still exists right now, we also have to consider how time erases all very true. Time form erases. of understanding and of a what lot their of, life was like. A lot of cave paintings, I'm just, for example, in the northern part of Minnesota, the border lakes between Minnesota and Canada, you can find carvings, not carvings, but essentially cave paintings, right? Just on faces of rocks and in various areas. And they weren't meant to tell a story. It was more of a marker, hmm. such as what there those? was there was a herd of buffalo here at one point. I don't think buffalo lived there, but I see there was a so herd the of buffalo there. So they marked people. Uh, in this specific case. In yeah. this case, okay, just, it, just yeah. In, in but a way also, to they're create... not really indigenous because they didn't descend from the trees. And, I see like, what you're getting at. I'm not going to get off on that. I see what you're getting at. Yeah. A, almost a, a landmark for people to right. see, to know right. something about the area. I understand yes. what yeah. you mean, too. I yeah. do want to go back to what you said a minute ago, though. I don't know if I would agree that word of mouth was one of the first, or storytelling was one of the first forms of entertainment because language didn't develop for a while. So I'd like to think that potentially, and I could be wrong because I don't know my history, but potentially things like cave paintings or music or anything else could have come before storytelling because it was developed before language. I would argue more likely a sort of game, horseshoes, for okay. example. Probably oh. came first, maybe throwing a rock against a tree. You put a bunch of rocks just, in a circle and then you yeah. try to throw that rock into yeah. that yeah. rock sure. circle or you something. Know, yeah. Some very yeah. basic form of just, I, I think Games, a, yeah. Yeah, I think a good... A good way to judge that for humans today would be observing apes and seeing what do they okay. do for entertainment, right? Okay. Maybe they sling their feces for entertainment, just for fun. I guess it's also interesting t trying to define what is entertaining to them. That is difficult. Because maybe so, they're yeah. swinging because their feces because they're uh, upset they're, yeah. or enraged, right. Here's and one. it's actually pain, okay. not entertainment. I can see what you're getting at. But it just seems funny because he's slinging his own poop. So you might misconstrue it as entertainment. Yeah, we not. can't yeah. know what yeah. they are trying to do, what they're feeling, or how they feel about what they're doing. So it's almost impossible. To, it's, it's so easy to just say... Oh, when, look, he's having fun. Or look my dog is fetching exactly, this toy exactly, because he enjoys exactly. fetching the toy. What no, the exactly. Just, what if they don't really enjoy it that much? They probably, they just, what if it's just stimulus response? What if that's yeah? they're just reacting? I'm pretty sure or they, they do in it the last they episode, they're supposed to. I didn't talk about it, but we talked about an article where I read that dogs react to tone and, and like, they don't feel body guilt. language. They don't actually feel guilt. And, it's yeah. just about the yeah. Whether the emotion it, that's conveyed to them. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Now, one thing that this is sort of kind of branching off, so I don't want to go off on this too much. Mm -hmm. And I wish for the life of me I could remember the quote-unquote disorder. There is this thing that I, I guess it's the way people's synapses are formed in their brain music does nothing to them 
it's just noise. It doesn't, it's not cohesive in their brain. They can't really follow the rhythm. They don't have emotional responses to it. It essentially is just noise that they don't want to even hear because it doesn't do anything to their brain. So then I think, well, what would entertainment on another planet be like? Or just like you guys were saying, what is entertainment like for other species on the planet? Because if you have humans that are born in a way that music does nothing for them at all. And they have to find other ways to entertain themselves. Yeah, so it, it just makes you wonder. It's entertainment for us, but for some people, music is just obnoxious and annoying, and it hurts their ears, and they want it off. I think just, again, it goes back to that simple dopamine serotonin release. Okay, I see where you're going with that. It's that, it's that numb feeling that you get mm. when you can just shut your brain off, quote. Yeah, it's... Yeah. it's I think more physical over metaphysics. You know, yeah. entertainment isn't a metaphysical concept. It is physical. Yeah. And right. I think that plays into how we perceive entertainment and what actually entertains us. And now we have so many different mediums of that. I mean, sure look at that. TV, streaming services, YouTube. People are always using social media. We just reference music. You were talking about reading at your, you know, right before your classes. Heck, we're doing a podcast right now, and all what of us. Heck? What the heck? What the heck? And all of us play video games, you know? And, There's... and streamers play video People watch for entertainment, people watch other, other people, people play video games. Right? I could never really get behind It's the most that. asinine thing I've ever heard. I don't watch streamers. <laughs> I... Please listen to our podcast <laughs> for entertainment. Please. <laughs> Some streamer. Well, that's, I... that's funny. It... You're, you're saying you could never understand watching someone else play a video game, but then there are some people who could never understand listening to three people sit down at a table and talk about something. It's just or so, just a podcast. Or just a podcast a in general. Just yeah. aren't into podcasts. Some people just do not like and podcasts. I enjoy listening to podcasts when it's like I'm doing chores or I would listen to them on the way to and fro work and stuff like that, but I wouldn't generally sit down and actively listen to a podcast. It's more of something I'm doing while I'm doing something else, which is really funny about what you said earlier. People, you're almost splitting your attention. It's like you're yeah. not even actually focusing on what's happening. You're almost yeah. just using it as another stimulus. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah. which for me, that, that depends on the podcast. Definitely, for um, sure. Some there podcasts are more, you can't not focus on. Right, if you like don't focus content. on it, then you won't. There's just no point in listening to it at yeah, that point. I, I probably couldn't listen to a certain philosophy podcast that I'm interested in while playing a video game. I could do it while I'm driving because, it, you know, it's more easy to listen to what they're saying. But I couldn't ever listen to it while playing a game or something because I don't. the focus isn't there. When I listen to things, it's typically music or something with a visual television or a movie yeah, that's, that's or a video game but maybe I do podcasting this sounds really facetious but because I kind of just want to have an opinion out there and no, I understand that. also share and connect with people too well that was the entire point of us doing this was hey we'd like to get these thoughts out there because we feel like it could potentially help people and even yes. if it doesn't just yes. being able to communicate with people and give them what they want to hear or you just know? if one person just likes what we have to say yeah and we can just continue doing this for this one person maybe i'd continue doing it but you know that becomes 11 or 20 if there's 20 people tuning in every single week to hear what we have to say, that's pretty cool. When you really just consider the potential of the internet and how you can use it to convey a message, it's really incredible what you can do. But at the same time, <laughs> we're often, all three of us, are disappointed by how people go about it, how people use it. How people treat each other on it. Right. They're the nihilists of the world that kind of believe that nothing matters, so they say what they want, they do what they want on the internet without realizing the impact that it has potentially on people. Of course, people could look at it and just scoff and be like, well, that's the internet, like you're supposed to, but what if a person's having a bad day and they kill themselves? Then how would you feel? Yeah. I would say it sort of goes beyond that, though, at least the internet. The way that 
let's say, ancient Greek philosophers would view entertainment, specifically the internet today, I think that they would be disappointed by it because it has so much potential. You, you can, anything, yes. anything that you want to know or learn or find out is on there, but that's not how most people use it. That's so true. Yes. Uh, that's one thing that is really funny about my mom is I'll be sitting in the living room with her and she'll have, she might be on her phone and she'll go, hey, how do you do this? Or, or can you look up this or something? I go, mom. You're on your phone. Please Google it. Like you, you the, my uh, my one cousin, he does most of his work on his car by just YouTubing stuff. I mean, that's one of the great things about entertainment yeah. currently is that he can YouTube how to fix yeah. parts on his car, and he just does it. My dad built a pool off of YouTube. That's Literally insane. got the parts, yeah. built the pool. Oh, I, I remember that. that yeah. it, was, it was being built at one time when I was when I came over. Yeah, I him yeah, I was that. helping yeah. out. It was cool. It was a cool experience to just. I really have a respect for uh, blue collar workers. I'm just gonna take a little side note to shout out to them. You know, they they do a lot of the infrastructure that we take for granted. The beams mm-hmm. in the room that we're sitting in right now. Yeah, someone built this entire building. I sure as yes. heck didn't do it. Yeah, <laughs> and that's a cool craft to have. Is it a form of entertainment for them? Maybe if they're passionate. That's one thing. When I was doing work with Albion at his farm it was so entertaining for me smashing down a wall the sledgehammer cutting wood and and measuring things and fitting it and put it we put entire floor in a barn that's insane that was so cool did you learn anything i did learn things and you know it was so entertaining i enjoyed it i loved it and it's amazing how you can be productive and also be entertained by things like that just kind of circling back to internet i don't think that well, I know that the internet isn't entirely entertainment. It's not what the internet is entirely used for overall. Yeah. It's not how it started. Yeah. But I think that entertainment has, I don't want to say perpetuated, but at least progressed the internet. Entertainment has progressed the internet. Definitely. Through YouTube, through Netflix, Definitely. through the internet of things. Mm. It's It now is more related to entertainment than I think most anything else. But that's not how it started. Uh, I might disagree with that. Oh yeah? Just because uh, when you think about just how much you use the internet for, it is really everything. It is. Uh, It is. But I do see James's point. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah, like the mass. Entertainment helped excel the internet. The internet was... It was at a point where people were using it as a tool for communication and for productivity, and, infrastructure. Yeah. But well, then, yeah, but then the public got. Now. Oh yeah. Also, like, put, like yeah. once money became a thing on the internet, like yeah. the idea of you can put your own physical currency into the internet. But now people use Amazon or any purchasing site, they buy things as entertainment. Even look at the they 90s. They have fun just clicking the buy now button on Amazon yeah, right. repeatedly okay. all day. Okay. Click, click, yeah. click, and, and they get so this the sense of enjoyment. The structure of the internet now is just based around this entertaining aspect to Because it's anything, music. Really. Because yeah. just the definition that we found of entertainment. One click shopping. It, yeah, it becomes amusing and enjoying. We're just like children. Enjoyment. It's like the peekaboo face. Peekaboo! Ah! Yeah, right. That's that's yeah. entertainment. Yeah. Just as entertain or internet has become entertainment simply through the pure enjoyment of the use of it. Oh, yeah. people! It it's so on demand now for everything, but entertainment especially, people just through need entertainment. Internet. Like you guys said, you have that one friend who constantly needs some sort of stimulus in the form of entertainment, whether he has three things going on or one thing while he's doing in real life two other things. Mm -hmm. It has to be there. James, explain to me how culture affects entertainment because that's something that like I kind of want to just jump to. Well, you got that backwards. I think entertainment affects culture pretty heavily. Uh, Okay. Yeah. I I mean, just even look at... uh, They definitely go hand in hand. 
Well, yeah, absolutely, but... But I, I see that's, like, more of your focus. If you're yeah. Pulling. Yeah. Uh, if you look at American culture, it's a mosh posh of various cultures <laughs> that, you know, the great melting pot, but you ask anybody just globally what is the cultural hub of America, they're going to say Hollywood. Most of what comes out of Hollywood is and entertainment. New York, but yeah, definitely. But Hollywood. New York's New York isn't very cultural. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess I guess it's not very cultural. I mean, New it York is, is very cultural. It's, it is in the sense that there's a lot of different people there that that have different cultures, but the I Heart New York shirt, New York Yankees. But that's but that's New York State culture. I'm talking about American Oof. culture overall comes from Hollywood, I think is the main hub of American you know, United States I don't culture. don't really think I'm going to disagree with you on that. Cool. Uh, so my point about culture <laughs> was entertainment directly impacts... <sighs> the way culture progresses. Yes, but also culture impacts entertainment, the way that entertainment impa- it progresses. So I think that... It, even yeah, you you were right that they go hand in hand. It's almost the same thing as like the nature nurture argument. It's like right, yeah, right. some things are and nature and about yourself. Yeah, right. Right. What came first? Did entertainment come before culture? Or did culture come before entertainment? Yeah, I think it's I worth know. noting that politics has now become a form of entertainment. Oh, that's so true in America. Yeah, at least just cable news in general, and that is a very it's dangerous. dangerous thing. So dangerous politics in a sense, is supposed to be boring. Yeah. In a way. Because it, it's supposed to be respectful. Right. To yeah. a certain degree. It Which depends on the on the system you're in. Like, in British politics, I, I've talked about it a lot, they kind of trash each other. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. In the middle of Parliament, yeah. That's pretty funny, actually. And it, it's just kind of accepted because that's the culture of... Britain, and that has always been how they conduct political discourse, but America being founded upon Puritan values, upon strict Christian values, kind of created this boring political atmosphere that was centered around political correctness and an overabundance of respect. To expand on that point, and Tying it back to what we were talking about earlier with internet, I think that back in the day, which was a Wednesday, um, (laughs) (laughs) back in the day you had D.C. politics, D.C. politicians living in Washington, D.C. with each other. Their children were going to the same schools, they were at the same restaurants together, going to the same dinner parties, because they had to, when, when... Congress was in session, they had to be there. Now, not so much. We have the internet. You can just call in, hey, my vote is yes, my vote is no. You don't get that interpersonal interaction with the other side of the aisle. Yeah. So it it divides politics even further. And even if you try to meet with politicians nowadays, it's not the same unless you're really someone of status or have money. Sure. Um, Which equates to status. That, that's the thing is, I think if if we tried to meet Biden, for example, it would be more of just, oh, hi, thanks, here's a handshake, here's a photograph, here's an autograph sort of thing. But well, if, met his wife. Oh, yeah? yeah? You met Biden's wife? My grandfather went to school Joe with Joe wife. Biden. Wow. That's went great. to school with Joe Biden, graduated a different year. But she they were seemed in school really different. nice. And I couldn't tell if that was just the political mask yeah. that she yeah, wears, right. mm-hmm. like or that was genuine. But in my ex- one experience with Joe Biden's wife, I don't know her name. I should. I you know, know, I don't even know what his wife looks like. Me neither. Who She's very pretty. Joe Biden. Can, can you pull up a picture? Yeah, so absolutely. I'm, just, I'm curious. I, I don't yeah. want to say Jill. That's just, um, oh my God, oh, it is it Jill. Oh, it is Joe Biden. Jill Biden, so shout out to you. Oh, I don't know if you Wait, remember Joe, me. Joe and I Joe met Joe. you at a shop, right? <laughs> <laughs> in oh New Jersey really yes wow. oh that makes sense too I was in I mean I was in the Philadelphia area working for the Bo Biden Foundation as a volunteer 
Yo, that's crazy. At one she point. She was married to somebody before Joe Biden. Oh, no, Joe. I don't know if Joe Biden can be our president. She is, <laughs> she is 69 years old. <laughs> nice. Until June of next year. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so, enjoy so, so, but, so anyways, but, entertainment. Well, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like what I was saying is that uh, if you tried to meet with Biden or something, you know, it would be a very formal, quick thing generally. However, you could have someone such as Joe Rogan have Biden on the podcast and he would get a lot more understanding of his politics and his perspectives. And but his I would also say that's how it usually would be. In the past, yeah, because politicians see themselves above everybody else. Yeah. I think just generally in one blanket statement, politicians think they're above everybody else. So when they meet with their constituents, they don't really care what the individual has to say. It's more about what everybody's saying. So mm. when they meet with the individual, they're just showing their support, like, "Hey, okay. vote for me." I see what you're one other here. vote that they get then. Yeah, that's true. Well, and, okay, so you saw how in the 80s and 90s there was a huge rush of metal. Metal was the top thing. I mean, oh my gosh, have you seen some of the photographs of the sea of people that would come to see bands like Metallica? I actually know Um, a dude who, he definitely was growing up probably our age at that time in the 90s like the 80s 2000s even he's been to Ozfest he's been to so many different places and like his form of entertainment especially when it comes to music as you said is centered around a lot of movement, a lot of partying. Yeah. Kind of letting go. Yeah. That metal kind of vibe, but that old metal vibe. Yeah. Um, so the music's loud and you're just rocking out and you're drunk. Yeah, and then it transitioned. So, okay, so yeah, so that music really affected the culture. Look at the way people were dressing at the time, the way people were talking at the time, the, the hairstyles people had and stuff. And I think that was a lot of be that was because of the music that they were listening to. And now you have the push in the 90s and early 2000s, and especially up to now, of the rap and hip-hop and R&B side of things and how they're influencing the way people talk and the way people dress and the push for material possessions in not obviously all rap and hip-hop and R&B, but some of it. And I think that that has played it has a huge impact on our culture and look at the way people act because of the music they listen to but are these dang kids i don't know if it's music i know what you mean now yeah but i don't know if it's music influencing the way that people are talking and dressing or if it's the way that people are talking talking and dressing influencing music music, yeah because they're more interested in that you know it's it's more of this the creator uh, uh a good way to say it is does art imitate life or does life <laughs> imitate art? Yeah. You know, I and especially and fashion as imp- entertainment too. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. How yeah, you I dress do. and how you present yourself. Have you ever noticed? I guess in relation to how entertainment has affected you in that yeah. way. Have you ever noticed that? So, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut anyone off, but you ever seen someone that they dress a certain way, or they talk a certain way, and they act a certain way, or whatever, and then you find out what kind of music they listen to, and you go, oh, that makes total sense. Like, so, just a girl, like, I, I imagine a girl who wears, um, you know, she might be very into thrifting and stuff like that, and she cuts her hair a certain way, and then she listens to music that's very, I don't know, just out there or it's like might be really into Mumford and Sons or just these other <laughs> artists that you know something I like that. I think I that. know someone. Yeah. Um but I don't know. I, I just but think it's yeah, that interesting. I don't know if it's if it's the music drawing them to that lifestyle or if it's that lifestyle drawing them to that music. Yeah, that's I'm true. it's you hard really to make know. that distinction. But either way, nonetheless, entertainment plays a role. It, it does. It at, at minimum it perpetuates that behavior or that vocabulary or that style. Mm. Even know. for myself, I've 
This is a shame to say, but this is true. I've never really given skateboarding a full attempt. Never. But I have always appreciated the culture and the style and the reason why they dress the way they do. So I kind of always have that tinge to me. Mm -hmm. I do wear different clothing, but I've enjoyed that style. And maybe I'm a hypocrite or maybe, you know... No, I, I totally get what you're saying. I think, But it's entertaining to me. I definitely dress a certain way yeah. because of the bands I listen to. Or our friend Dan, who he plays, he played soccer, so he dresses a certain way. Like the pants he wears or the type of shirt or hoodie he wears, it might literally say something about soccer on it or something. That what, what you're into and what forms of entertainment you attach to totally affect you as a person. And if that's happening within each individual, it's affecting the culture as a whole. But it's the culture behind the entertainment that you're identifying with. Yeah, you know, that's if, true. If you're listening to metal, you see how these other metal heads or how the bands are dressing. So then you dress a similar way because that's how the culture is based yes. on what entertainment you're right. into. Yeah. Like yeah. the guy I was talking about, music. he has tattoos specifically for metal. Yeah. He showed me... You know, we talk about where all the shows he's been to, the festivals, the things he's done. He's 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 a good guy. He's a good guy. Um, he clearly his life is influenced by his form of entertainment. Okay. That music is important to him, which as it is to a lot of people, and it affects how they carry out their life. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely. Uh, a lot of entertainment is a lifestyle choice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, to transition here to get really into the nitty-gritty of it, entertainment addiction. Yeah. This is this is a very modern problem, I yeah, would like argue. That one guy from yes. Australia we know who he mm-hmm. he's addicted to so many different he, From he's down a, under. He's a, yeah. And and he's able to be addicted. He can go through life addicted to entertainment easily, as many people do, yeah. because there's no threat of death if you're not working 24-7 to keep the fire lit That's and so hunt true. for food. Yep. It's easy now to yeah. just ingest entertainment. and Because there's no way we're not all addicted so, to some form of entertainment. Absolutely. Just right. a question about this friend from Australia, Mike. Shout do out to they... Australia. <laughs> Shout out to all the things that could kill me in Australia. I really hope it doesn't please. burn again. <laughs> yeah, please. Yeah. Uh, just pl- please prevent- stop mining coal. It's killing your environment. I'll stop. Yeah. Give us Steve Irwin back. <laughs> Give us Steve Irwin back. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead yeah, with what so. you were going to say. <laughs> um, I was going to say, does this person have any sort of mental ailments or things that could be mentally debilitating to his life okay so that's the thing is i think he and james could probably correct me if i'm wrong here but i think he has mentioned that he does have a minor case of something such as asperger's and and i think that might be why he clings to entertainment in social settings because he feels very uncomfortable there are 15 people in the same room so doing something such as going on his phone makes him feel very safe and not like he's overstimulated with everything that's happening. Gotcha. Now, granted, you can obviously have people who are like that that yes. don't potentially have that's, a minor case that's of That's what Asperger's. I was going to say. I think now it's very easy for people to become addicted and, and just normal, everyday people that wouldn't have any type of diagnosis mm. still can't stand being away from their devices for right. too long. They had, they're addicted to their phone. They're on it all the time when they're off it talking to somebody as soon as there's a long conversation you see them pull up their phone and Mm. go on social media or go on youtube or play a game on their phone so well sometimes i'm in the middle of talking to Derek, and then he just whips out his phone and then i just lose all momentum of my conversation it's okay we all do it i'm just stabbing at you because i'm being a douche yeah but (laughs) but it it does happen mark this explicit (laughs) But it does happen. You know, it does we, happen. we all yeah. do it. It does we, happen. I we all use entertainment as an escape or some way to think about how many people just pull out their phone when they're walking somewhere or on the train mm-hmm. or something like that yeah. because they just don't want to look and at people. I and talk. I have music playing in my room almost all the time. Yeah, because I, it's it's just it's 
at that point, it's not even entertainment. It's just background noise to make you feel safe mm. or comfortable, not alone, which is what ed- entertainment's supposed to do, right? It's supposed to be an escape. Be an escape, be a distraction or something, mm-hmm. yeah. So I'm glad you called me out, actually, because I've been trying to be a lot more mindful about my phone time and the distractions that it causes and it kind of started with this app that my insurance company made me download but in general oh, because it, of using your phone while you're driving I'm not making an excuse and maybe this is just me but I doubt it like I every single day have some sort of conversation going on like when I checked my phone 20 minutes ago I had two missed calls from someone they texted me Two other people text me that I've talked to mm. pretty much every single day, yeah. not to mention group chats, not to mention Snapchats, not to mention other notifications. It's so much at once that it's really hard for me to like even at, prioritize something in the real world. At, at that point, it's not even really entertainment, though, right? It's more just a social connection. It's, it's, it's different than entertainment in the sense that Yes, social interactions can be entertaining, but it's also an obligation. Mm. So, sorry, you can you can just no. I it doesn't have to be an obligation, and it's not right. right. I mean, yeah. ever, anybody you can I, cut anybody agree. off at any. In point. a lot of yeah, cases, it's not. It's, not, not, off, it's not the case. Like the people that I text typically wouldn't mind me just disappearing for a little while. I still feel obligated to just say, "Hey, sorry, I'm busy recording a podcast," which mm. I've been doing. Yeah. I I stayed away from my phone a lot more now that I'm working. But yeah, it it's a problem with me and like distraction when it comes to my iPhone. It's it's tough. And I think yeah. a lot of people sink into it instead of try to like pull their head back. Yeah, cuz the easeability of grasping at that uh, grasping at and catching that entertainment is so easy. I, I geez, man, I have I have a a laptop that I can access anything on. I've got a computer. I've got a smart TV. I have a cell phone. I have a tablet. And what are the chances that all of those things are not working? And it's even, true. And even if none of those are working, I can still just pick up a book. It's it's so easy to just get that entertainment so instantly nowadays. That's why it's Absolutely. so hard to pull away from it because it's always in front of you. I think... That is something that I definitely cherish about my childhood is that we did have video games. We had all the forms of entertainment that, you know, we do now. Good old Halo 3. We didn't have cell phones like we do now. Yeah, um, we didn't. Smartphones. They were not smart. They, they were, were dumb had, phones. We had cell phones. They were dumb phones. They were, they dumb, were, phones. They were <laughs> dumb phones. And it was cool that way because the phone didn't control you. You had complete control. Like <laughs> You controlled the phone. It was I mean, you did. so <laughs> simple. And yeah. outside of TV, video games, and texting, there really wasn't a form of entertainment that didn't involve the actual reality I will say, around you. Mm. Back back when we had dumb phones and not smartphones, flip phones, there was still kids our age, which, wait, what, I'll say like 13-year-olds? I think I was in, in ninth grade of high school when I got my first phone, so I was oh. about 14. But kids have phones way earlier now. I, I had a phone earlier for yeah, emergency. Me too. Okay. It was like, like an emergency phone. Yeah, it, it was didn't, it, it didn't have emergency. any minutes. Like I could only use it to call when I had to. Oh, I was okay. texting Brian in sixth grade. Sixth grade, yeah. But for sure. I think kids still, even when they were flip phones, there was, it was a form of communication that was fast, easier than email. Yeah. People used it. Um, I remember one time... I was, I don't know, I was watching a movie with my parents or something, and my phone was vibrating, going off with text messages, and I, I just, I didn't care, right? Mm, my parents were like... no sense of urgency. Right. My parents were like, wow, you didn't, like, get up to check your phone. That's pretty rare for people with phones these days. Mm-hmm. And at the time, I was like, probably 13, if not younger, I was like, 
what are you talking about? <laughs> what? It's it's gonna be there for the next infinite amount of time until the. It's so. Sorry, that's one thing that gets me really fired up. Is um, is uh, I I am very grateful in my life to have like ninety five percent of my close friends do not care if I don't get back to them for like two days, um, because. Uh, <laughs> I mean, what you're doing things. Some people are working, yeah. and then they get off work, and then they... I mean, geez, one of my best friends is married now, and he's got a kid on the way. They've got an apartment to take care yeah. of. He is now essentially the only worker in the house because his wife can't work because she's pregnant because you can't be an EMT when you're pregnant. So yeah. he has all these things going on, and then he texts me like five days later. He's like, hey, man, I've been busy. I'm like, dude... I don't care. It's fine. People I, have shit to do, I've gotten, and that's all right. I'm glad that I got in touch with you after five days instead of never. Right. Yes. You know? Right. I don't yes. care that it took you five days to get it's, back to me. It's a sense of urgency, at least. And this, it depends. This, this that's true. It depends on the context. not necessarily related to entertainment. It's more about the social connection that we have now. But it's still the sense of urgency. As soon as somebody texts you, you feel... I don't know if it's obligation to reply or if it's just, I don't, I don't know. No, I can I totally know. understand that. I, I think that yeah. most of the reason why I try to reply back quickly to some people is that I don't think that they would tolerate me not responding mm. fast enough. Again, like 95% of the people that I associate with are okay with it, mm -hmm. but you might have someone that, I don't know, it might be a new person you've met or something. And now like, it, it depends I mean, on the urgency of the message. You know, if I text you like, hey, uh, I'm dying in a ravine right now and I need you to come pick me up and you yeah. don't rep reply for five days, like that might not be okay. Well, here's an example. But, you just texted me at 7 a.m. this morning that's right. And you said, hey, I'm going on a hike if you want to join me. I didn't even text you until 11 because I wasn't conscious. No. And you were just like, eh, it's okay. I just got back from my hike. Like, yeah. whatever. Because no, you I, know I, that I mean, if I, I don't respond within a certain time frame, you're just going to go. Right. You're going to do your I was, thing. I was going at 7.45. Yeah. I figured, give him 45 minutes. If there's no reply, cool. Yes, yeah, because I'm, I'm probably asleep. That's, and you didn't get angry at me. Nope. Oh, why, why didn't I actually you forgot when that I texted, I texted you <laughs> until you texted me. <laughs> Did someone I, get mad at you? No, I'm just no. I'm just saying no. like it's but great yeah. that he I I had an ex girlfriend that okay this is this is kind of a story she when we when we first met she was like hey I'm really bad at texting you know if I don't reply it's it's not about you it's just my own fault I was cool with it you know I was yeah. the same way because you're you know? yes that makes I'm, sense now she would reply instantly every time and I wouldn't and then she would get mad at me. Because I don't reply right away, even though she was the one to tell me I don't reply right away. I think that's a mask. That's that's kind of a beginning of the relationship mask. Mm, okay. That yeah. for better or well, for well, worse, so the, so people the thing wear is, it. Like I, I don't really. Mm, I try no, to be I, conscious I think there and is be genuine, mask. but yeah. you you don't want to give things right. away. <laughs> you know, right away. You don't want to give this? things away, but you also want to seem pooping than in you front are. of a partner. So, productive entertainment, you know, you can, if reading, you practice a skill while reading, uh, you can learn things from reading, yeah. such as nonfiction, such as uh, from nonfiction books, you can learn grammar, you can, you can be inspired I've to write. I've learned from philosophy that if I think I'm real. Philosophy <laughs> is not entertainment. I would disagree. I, well, okay. Reading, reading I have that. I have that I, on a slide somewhere. We'll get to it. Sure. But I mean, okay. learning. reading. We'll just yeah, yeah. I have. Yeah, I, learning I have is a so slide. entertaining. I have a be. slide about learning. You ever just spent like Actually, you, did we pass it you just did something that you learned about that you were like, wow, it. that was so cool that or I, I never. Oh, learning as a form of entertainment. Yeah, learning as a form. We of entertainment. We skipped right over it. It's so fun to learn. I think sometimes. Right, it could have been mentioned. I yes, it can be depending on what you like to learn. Too. Yes, yeah, and how you're learning it. Documentaries I generally don't you know? have a good time learning math, but I do have a good time right, learning but, about how to you know build a website. But or in like in that. terms of entertainment, right? If you're learning through entertainment, you're probably reading a nonfiction book. You're probably watching a documentary or docu series. You're probably watching a YouTube video on how to fix your car or how yeah, to build a website. Reading an article right? or something. Sure. You're still yeah, when you when you get lost in Wikipedia, 
you're learning things, but it's also entertaining. But not everybody gets entertainment out of learning. You are a sucker for World War II in color. Hey, man. World War II in color? That's a second friend that, sounds that awesome. I have. What? That loves World, World, World War, War II. II in color. Oh, yo, yo, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yo, it, yo, 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 it's yo. pretty cool. Yeah. It's pretty I liked, crazy. I, to see. I really liked the Civil War documentary they had on Netflix. Um, yes. And then they took it off. Civil War is I didn't so get cool. Very it. entertaining. Yeah, well. You can also be entertained by doing things like sports and exercise you know, in general. Exercising. Right? You get fit, it's productive, it's good for you. Mm-hmm. And we already mentioned documentaries, you can learn. But there is a negative side to all of it. No matter how positive or productive the entertainment is, if you overindulge and get lost in this fantasy world of entertainment, it can be detrimental not only to your mental health, but also to your lifestyle and your position in yes, life. Yes, that's like gambling. You might focus right. your attention only onto one source of entertainment that may or may not be productive, and if that's the only thing... Like you have some people who day in and day out only watch Netflix and that's the only thing they do. Mm-hmm. Sure, there is such but, a thing as too much exercising too. Yes, and that's true. to be frank, if all you ever did was reading, you would do nothing but reading. Right, exactly. Yeah. And, and let's take reading as an example here. If you overindulge in reading, let's say, uh, I'm just going to shout out the Red Rising series by Pierce Brown. Let's say that you spend years on end just reading those books and rereading them mm. and you get great understanding for the lore and you now know how to write just like Pierce Brown and you're entertaining yourself and it's still productive because you're you're practicing your reading skills but you're overindulging you're getting trapped in this fantasy realm so mm. when you when you're done reading you look at the external world and say this isn't enough Okay, I right. can see you, what you, you feel mean. unsatisfied by the world because you're so used to this fictional world that you've overindulged in. You're yeah. sort of trapped in this fantasy. I, I definitely agree. Go, go ahead, Derek. You were going to say something? Yeah, I was going to say another form of entertainment that can be produced, self-produced in the sense that you are the one doing something that is entertaining. Sort it's, of like a hobby. Right, a hobby. It could be an art even. It could just be whatever. A lot of people say, oh, I'm not that artistic. I can't draw. I can't paint. I don't know what I'm doing. I can't write. I don't know how to express myself. Yeah, yeah they set you had mentioned after failure by just it, thinking they can't even do it from the beginning. Right, and you had mentioned like YouTube videos are a great source of information to learn things yeah. or to, at, at the least to get started. Yes. With the guitar, I know four chords, big whoop. Right. I have to get a lefty guitar. But YouTube has helped you learn those four chords. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Same way with art. The Now I had a friend help me with that piece that you saw in my room mm, yeah. uh, earlier yeah, that, today. Yeah, it was a great... It was, oh, so to make the planets, Jesus, planets. We, took, so we took giant... Like foam pieces dipped in the paint? No, uh, thicker paper. It's oh, like, like construction paper. Construction, kind of. sort of, yeah, like a giant piece. And she took bowls and put bowls on the construction paper and drew, traced the circles. Mm-hmm. And then she just carefully cut out the circles, put them on, sprayed. Actually, how'd she do it? No, she took an X-Acto knife, so she took the whole piece of construction paper that she just did the circle on. Wow. And she took an X-Acto knife and would cut out yeah. the circle, and then you would have that circle so you could just place the template. it, template, yeah, you just, yeah, spray it, and mm. it would be fine. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and it was just, it's so simple. Cooking as a form of entertainment is yeah, also... so easy. Is also an art. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. But it's easy to do simple things. So let's, so let's just take cooking. Right. If you're just cooking for fun, definitely a form of entertainment. But then when you're a professional chef and your cooking is what you rely on to make a living, doesn't it become less fun? Maybe. I kind of imagine. Maybe. Just like a streamer with video games, well, right? Somebody that enjoys playing video games goes and streams, and now their livelihood depends on them streaming and interacting with their audience. It almost can't be used as like a relaxation escape. I'll anymore. give you a right. counter example. Right. Mike Tyson. 
That guy came out of retirement. He is fighting very soon. Seriously? Yes. Mm-hmm. I did hear and I don't know if you've seen his training videos. You probably uh, I, haven't. I saw those, he yeah. He is in shape. He is in the best shape he's been in probably 10 years. That's wild. It's terrifying. <laughs> and the, he, I'm, I believe we went on Joe Rogan's podcast and commented, uh, like, Joe asked him, hey, like, why are you coming back? Like, what, what drives you to come back at 50 years old? And he said, I, I love it. Like, I'm nothing without fighting. Well, I feel it's part of I feel like lifestyle. less of a man. I feel like less of a a person when I'm not fighting. When I'm just doing nothing, has all the money he could ever want, everything yeah. he could ever want. He has a tiger. He has it all, dude. Yeah. So there's when making his living, using his form of entertainment that he's passionate about. Like it's it's still it's still fired. Like it's it's still wow fueled. Um, he's enjoying the way that he's making his living is entertaining to him. And I think that that's so cool that he can still find that entertainment in what he does. And that fighting for him is just his whole life. Like that's that you don't have, like a lot of people don't have that thing that they do. That making a career out of what entertains you is a dream. Yeah. Uh, then but it's not a pipe dream. It's a dream. It's well, it's, well you know, you know, yes. people, people, uh, Back before I even went to college, I, I heard, if you love what you do, it's not a job. Something along that line. Yeah. You know, I, I know, if, I know if, the if saying you, you're referring to, yeah. If you love what you're do, you're, you don't work a day in your life. That's what it was, I think. But at the same time, you still do. Yeah, you still I, work. I yeah. loved interning at a history center, right, archiving, an archive center, a library, reading over old documents. It, it was amazing. So much fun. But it was still work. There were still parts of it that weren't fun. That's right. And there's always going to be parts of anything that you do for a living that you don't want to do. <laughs> I was going to say, life just isn't fun sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It's not. It's, that's there, true. There's lulls in, in a day. Yeah. And that's okay. Even, even, let's just, any form of entertainment, video games... You know, you play a video game, you don't love 100% of the game. You might love 99% of the game, but there's always something in whatever it's you're that doing or, or watching or listening to that you personally would just change. But that doesn't make it any less entertaining than, than the value that it has to you. It's like where does entertainment kind of cross that line into an overindulgence, into something that's becoming a very negative force in your life yeah okay so so with what you guys were saying earlier about you know someone saying might say like, oh i'm not artistic or i can't do this or that because i don't have the talents or the skills or, or whatever i think that mindset makes it very easy to fall into easy entertainment overindulgence because you have some folks who might say oh, well, I'm not good at anything. I can't draw. I'm not good at art. I can't play an instrument. You know, put in whatever bracket you want in there, like whatever thing. But that that's when overindulging on something such as Netflix or YouTube or maybe just reading something trashy books all the time. doesn't necessarily take skill. Yeah, becomes so easy because you're not trying to do something that's mm-hmm. productively entertaining. I think that's the fault of just the ease of entertainment, the, the yeah. variety of choices that we have to entertain ourselves. Yeah. Back in the day, if you wanted to entertain yourself, you would learn an instrument. I have technically or, an infinite number of ways to entertain myself just with my phone. Even, yeah, 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 sure. Literally, the, you, I could if, go on any website. I can download you, any of the apps that yeah. exist. If you had only your phone for entertainment the rest of your life, you would survive. I could sit on the calculator yeah. on my phone and do different Unless math. Unless you equations. didn't have a charger. Unless I don't That's have a true. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> That's very true. But, yeah. but overall, entertainment has shifted to this more passive form. Right? Yeah. It's way less active. And this is one thing that I really... Yes, okay, that's amazing. Exactly what you just said. It's way less active. Okay, this is one thing... At least potentially. Potentially, right. Some um, people have active entertainment. That's awesome. Right. But Keep with it. What do you think is, a VR headset is, then? Yeah, 
Okay, hold on. I just <laughs> a lot of things going on at this so, point. One second. With James just, just talking about like not active forms of entertainment, I think you know like the law of inertia, right? If something is in motion, it tends to stay in motion. If it's at rest, it tends to stay at rest. Yes. I think that plays so much into how we entertain ourselves because I've I've you noticed just, you that. You just think one more episode. Yeah. Or, right. Yeah. I'll be sitting at my desk and. I might, I don't know, let's just say I have just finished playing a video game, and I'm done with it. And my brain defaults to, what can I do to entertain myself next? Instead of, well, I'm at rest, I don't want to get in motion and do something, but I know that if I get into motion of doing something, it's going to be easier to do it. And that's when it becomes the point in which you have to break the cycle of, I need to do my dishes. I also have laundry I need to do. Um, I need to dust this or reconfigure this. And that's when overindulging and sinking into that entertainment is you have that breaking point where you need to snap it and start getting that inertia and moving towards another productive form of... Honestly, I it's like I said earlier, I would borderline call doing the dishes or the laundry a form of entertainment because it depends on how you view it yeah it depends on your mindset i don't legitimately enjoy doing those things but, but when i'm doing, in the middle of doing mm-hmm. dishes i kind of am having a good time because it's, i'm just thinking it's about this stuff idea and, of inertia yeah and i'm mm-hmm. just moving i'm like flowing so i don't know you're already doing it so why stop now yeah but right, right. Well, i'm not gonna and just do half the dishes and so the That's so the dishes like, doing the dishes in that instance isn't the form of entertainment. It's you thinking about or fantasizing about something. It's you... Yeah. Entertaining I, myself with the idea of getting something done or right, something. I don't right. know. I don't really know how to explain it. I guess, I guess what I'm trying to say is the concept of doing the dishes, right, just as a concept in life, Right. Of, of the things you do in a day, okay. doing the dishes isn't the top of the list for how am I going to entertain myself today. Yeah. Right. It's more, it falls more under this, I have to do it, I have to be productive, I have to, you, you know, just do it to keep life moving. Yeah. But then once you're doing it, this law of inertia, once you're doing it, it's easier to just get it done at that point. Yeah. I, so I, it's, I, I wouldn't even say it's entertainment until you're already almost done. Okay, I could kind of get where you're going with that. Or at least n- not even almost done, just until you at least get in motion. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think uh, once you're in motion, kind of the snowball effect can take place. So... Camus talks about this this idea of philosophical suicide, right? Where you think so much about what is life, right? I mean, obviously Camus was an existential philosopher. He wasn't an existentialist himself, but he was an existential philosopher. So you think so much about what is life, right? And at some point, when you can't find the answer, because there is no answer... You stop. You shut off. You stop asking yourself, why am I here? You commit philosophical suicide where you don't think about this anymore. And I think that... Are you just watching the next episode and the next Well, no, episode? no, no, no. Not even. Not even at that point yet, right? Let's just say a college kid who isn't addicted to entertainment. He's just thinking about what his life determines that he can't figure it out. So he philosophical suicide. He stops thinking about it. I think that in today's society, a lot of people have reached that point. Not not even like, what am I trying to say? I think I know what you're getting at. Yeah, I see what a, you a mean. Lot of, a lot of, of people have have come to the conclusion that they cannot figure out the meaning of life. So it's so much easier for them to just turn to a life of entertainment to just to just continue to shove this shit into themselves. So that they don't have to think about, well, why am I here? What is my purpose? Why is anybody here? Is yeah. this intelligent design? You know, they don't have to think about that it, anymore when they're watching, binge watching The Office on Netflix all day. Yeah. It right? blocks out the noise. Exactly. It, it, exactly. It's this idea of escapism. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it kind of develops this one-dimensional way of thinking. This Exactly. Sort of, 
cattle shoot yep. of a frame of mind where you just consume and that kind of mindset itself allows for people with power and position to use entertainment as a form of control and the media in many ways skews our perception of reality based on how they decide to show the news mm. and especially if it's an article <clears throat> the words that they use and the and facts the people that, that they type on them like the facts they report on and what they intentionally leave out the headlines yep. and everything clickbait everything yeah. like that and they yeah. sp- and because paper copies have gone out of style because of mm-hmm. the internet so basically because of the internet also stop killing trees they have to now create a reason for people to come to their websites so that they have a reason for people to want to advertise their companies on their website and then they now have the option to block information until you pay a subscription which is totally fair and I understand that part but the point of writing media and showing media the way media sources do is to entertain it's not to deliver news anymore. It's not to Fox give news. you the facts. Fox News has a disclaimer that it is not meant for factual reporting of the news. It's meant for entertainment. Wow. The Fox News cable TV news station says that it's for entertainment. I mean, how is that not a, a teacher, a, a red a teacher flag? that we had in school called that kind of news, news analysis. Now, this uh, was in this was in 2013. That is a good word for it. News, news analysis. analysis. Huh. You have you have investigative journalists reporting the real news, and then you have your your cable TV uh, news anchors yes. reporting on yes. what they think about what this other person reported on that is actual fact. And then they just skew it in their own opinion. If yeah. you actually watch the news versus what people consider, like, the, the media news, kind of the media, the news itself is, like, pretty chill. It, it's, it's, it's nice it's to watch at the end of the day. The news at mm-hmm. 6, it's typically mm-hmm. localized, too, like, especially mm-hmm. living in Philly. It was all Philly news, mm-hmm. and it was yeah, just like, like pretty Delaware simple County. stuff. Yep. Like this happened, and then this happened, and then there was a cow loose on South <laughs> Street yeah. today. Yeah. Literally, like, was wow. in the news the one day, that's and hilarious. that's that's entertainment at that point. That's it's entertainment. I don't, but I don't it's need also to know. real news. There's no yes, exaggeration. But, but, no, but I don't there, need to know about a cow loose. But it's fun to hear about. Okay, I well, will say yes. I do think a lot of local news stations are a great source of entertainment for people who just want something on. And I'll say that because my grandmother is one of those people that when she doesn't have anything to watch, she usually will just turn on the local news because it's just something to entertain her. It's just something. Her. Mm-hmm. So, it's, it's just like our friend from Australia. It's just something, something in the background. Something there to entertain and distract. Yeah. Maybe the truth is that a lot of things that would be considered breaking news right now, probably 20 years ago, just wouldn't have been said. One, oh, because, yeah. one because there was no way to just say stupid things like that because the internet wasn't on your phone yet. And you also... Yeah, I think that yeah. became... Uh, people always say, oh, it's YouTube that's going to kill society. Oh, it's this, that, or the other thing. I should probably cut that out because we're putting it on YouTube. But... <laughs> The point being, having such unlimited access to entertainment can be very, very controlling of your life. It can, it definitely has changed society as we know it and how we interact in real life versus over the internet. Now, I will say something. Yeah, you've wanted to say something for a while. So let go me ahead. let me go off on this for a second here. Now, okay. I don't want to give an entire amount of credibility to what I'm about to say, nor do I even entirely believe it myself. So disregard everything. I'm kidding. Sure. <laughs> it's a joke. Um, but I think, so kind of back to metal in the 80s and 90s, I think it was very interesting how there was just this 
shift. You went from people listening to this kind of music that was very amped up and it gave people energy and it made them quote unquote aggressive. So um, not to get off track, but this is just how you're interpreting a cultural shift. You're you're looking at it through the, the lens of people who like metal. Sure. Because metal yeah. was popular, but it, I it would not under, consider it mainstream. It, it was, was definitely still, underground. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It just got to its peak popularity to the point where we were out there. Yeah. And I think, I, I, I'm actually convinced at this point that there was a huge push against it by trying to get other artists out there in a way where I think that metal was stomped on intentionally because the government, whatever that even means, didn't want this becoming more and more popular because they wanted something such as mellow rap to come more into the mainstream so that people feel more relaxed and less aggressive and things like I that. Think so sort of this I think I'm pushing going, an agenda. Pushing an agenda of of shoving metal back down underground as far just as they possibly rap. could because they didn't want these types of people I in think, society. I think I'm just... I'm respect. I understand where you're coming I'm saying, from like because pushing a genre of music as control. Metal, you know, we've been fans of metal for a long time. I've been listening to metal since I was like six years old. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I've been a fan for quite a while. Good for you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> my point being, I, I think you're being a little biased right now. I think oh, probably. you're you're yeah. misinterpreting the popular opinion. Yes. Which yeah. was Absolutely. metal was never popular right. like that. Yeah, it, no, it I, got I popular. Totally it got, got popular, popular to like, the point where, like, people in two thousand seven to like two thousand probably twelve, thirteen. No, metal no, was definitely at its peak. Definitely was definitely metal was definitely at its peak in like the eighties and nineties. Yeah, if if we're gonna yes. get if we're gonna get off on a whole Specific. music based thing, I'm gonna say like eighties and nineties. Let's even just say sixties, seventies, eighties. Right, you have Ozzy Osbourne, you have like White Snake, you have these classic metal groups yeah. that were underground. Those people were not popular when they were releasing music. Yeah. But now, 30, 40, 50 years later, you have them majorly popular. They're they're considered classics, but at the time they were not they, it wasn't like this instant classic kind of Yeah. So uh, do you think that if if I heard you correctly, the government had some sort of play in metal not becoming as popular as it was becoming? I would be okay to subscribing to that theory if I had enough evidence. So at this point, I'm not going to say it's the case, but I'm inclined to believe that it's a possibility that that's the case. I think Why? it's more just about popular opinion. Why do you... Most of the population didn't listen to metal... So it didn't yeah, become so it popular. really could just be that. And, and now you have such a large population with such access to a variety of music that it has become more popular simply just based on accessibility. Yeah, yeah it's very the possible that it, there are more listeners to metal now than ever, and it, I don't know. I it, think It made I, you feel... I think that there are more listeners now to music than ever. Yeah. Um, so I think that, yes, probably in metal... But I think just generally, generally speaking, in music yeah. overall. Yeah. Like, yeah. I understand how you felt and how you feel because you like metal like you do. I just, I do enjoy many different subgenres of rap mm-hmm. as well as other music. Yeah. And I can just tell that rap has been the predominant genre for probably Since 30 years now. Since yeah, the 90s. I'd yeah, say 30 easily. years now. Uh, yeah. R&B. People who are popular in rap are mm-hmm. on R&B another about. level of famous. Whereas I I really do think metal is popular out there just as mm-hmm. dubstep is, but mm-hmm. it really just depends on your preference of entertainment. Yes. Yes. And Absolutely. how many people are like-minded. Hmm. So, let's just kind of get back to this entertainment as control. Yeah, okay, sorry. One thing Derek said to me the other day huh? that just totally scrambled my brain was he goes, he's like, isn't a lullaby kind of a form of, con- of control? Oh, it absolutely is. And I was like, uh, wait, Have that's you read insane. Brave New World? Yes. Yeah. But, 
Yeah, the, I totally this, forgot It's this that. conditioning of children. Yeah. You know, you feed them lines about things, and they just absorb it, and it sticks with them for their entire Did life. Did they do things where they would play... Uh, play things while they're sleeping, like yeah, you that, want that was to be this way, world. or you yeah, will yeah. be this way. Yeah, I mean that's like that's that. a fictional depiction Obviously. of of what could actually happen. I don't think that in in the book they do it while the people are sleeping. Hmm. I don't think that's a very good way to learn something, yeah, especially I don't, I don't know, like subconsciously because you're asleep. Yeah. But no, it's an affirmation. People do that all the time. Yeah, but does it? Yes, but but, but the way that they though. use it in the book. Yeah, that, it's, that even, Otis it's Huxley, like subconscious. The, I see where he's going with that. The way yeah. that Huxley uses it is amazing, but realistically, I don't know how practical it would be in controlling a population. I don't know. But it hasn't been tested, and I love Huxley, so I'm not going to trash talk him anymore. <laughs> um, but in terms of just using entertainment to push an agenda, you have cable news stations like Fox News just turning out news stories that aren't necessarily factual. You have general cable news turning out uh, stories that that might be biased or skewed in some way. You have lullabies. You have th- this feeding to children these ideas, TV shows, and yeah, music that you shows. listen to will influence how you, how you think. All the shows nowadays, and, you're so right. And I think that generally this push for entertainment this addiction that we all have obviously people recognize that and i think that it creates a more docile public i think that more people are okay just sitting back and and delving into entertainment and escaping from the real world and it definitely plays a role in how we are fed news and facts about life it comes through entertainment now it doesn't really come through non-fiction and and learning things because the majority of the public is addicted to entertainment yeah i think there are things right now going on in the world that people would stand up and fight for if they could guarantee that they could go home and watch netflix at the end of the day yeah but the fact that we are so comforted. And think about it this way. If there was an apocalypse, people would be like, oh, I would survive. How much do you love Spotify? <laughs> How much do you love Instagram? How long how could you last without Netflix? Do you have any recorded songs saved? Dude, how crazy What if there's no electricity? Go? Oh, my gosh. how cra- People would go insane. Yes. Like, if, if the only Most way... people would not survive simply because of human-on-human hostility okay that's that's true but i'm thinking yeah i would try and find you guys as fast as possible i'm not gonna <laughs> yeah, lie yeah I'm, I'm coming here yeah I know nobody else is right in this yeah building. yeah mm-hmm. i uh we can keep i just i really think all of us the three of us would go through entertainment withdrawal we really would if if all the infrastructure of the world but, just collapsed we'd be you, like but we'd just have more just pressing as, issues just oh, as for sure. well, just as the ancients did, we would create our own forms of energy. Yes. Sure, we don't have electricity, but I can still throw a rock against a wall for um, two I hours have and have fun. Basketball. Exactly. Right. But you you'd, still, skates. you'd still sit there at night on some nights, whenever it may be, and you'd go, I really miss music. I miss, I miss being I able miss to watch music. something. I, I miss, miss being music. able to play a game. Yeah. Probably I miss my electric the guitar. Most. But when it comes to like, imagine because. If it were impossible for me to get back those things, I feel like I would probably accept my fate. Now, obviously, I can't tell for sure because right, that's not, not in a this reality. Situation. Not in that right. situation. But if you're just typically, I feel like if my back's against the wall, I'm more along the lines of like, okay, just move on to the next thing, whatever. Hmm. Like yeah. find a way out. I'd say generally, I'm easy going enough that as long as there's some form of entertainment, whether it's board games or throwing a rock against a wall, I could yeah. find a way to entertain myself. Wall ball. Fun game. Amazing game. I think that's actually... Wall ball maybe isn't, but I know court ball. Do you know court ball? Mm-hmm. That is a Berks County uh, indigenous sport. Nobody else knows about it. Really? Yep. 
court ball, you play on a tennis court, and you play baseball on a tennis court. How does that work? Have you never played court? I uh, don't. I've never court, heard of this. What, what is it? Court ball. Court, court ball. ball. I've court never ball. heard of court yeah, ball. Yeah, you you have a wiffle ball bat and a tennis ball. Okay. Uh-huh. And there's a pitcher. There's bases. There's you know you, you, we used to play. You just flip. You just turn the tennis court diagonally yeah and that yeah. becomes the diamond yes and then yep. the fence is the fence the is the out it's like if you get it past the fence it's a home run but other than that i like broke the girl, ball is in I the, broke court, the girl's nose yeah. playing it because when i swung back she was standing right behind me yep. i literally hit her directly in well, I, th- I threw a bat at somebody by accident because i thought it was baseball because <laughs> i played baseball as a kid and i would always like chuck my bat to the side when i ran and there was somebody just standing there in line, and I yeah. fucking threw it, and then and then and they went, oh! <laughs> and I was running, and I was like, what the fuck is that? You just I didn't even care. Face. But yeah, the point I is, got yelled at after we would the we game, would be but... fine. Uh, uh, there are so many yeah, ways to entertain way to yourself enter- yeah. outside of a if, screen. If the and I think ancients great, could do it, we can do it too. I think that's a great way to wrap up this episode. Yes. Is to just remind everyone that outside good, not danger. Go outside, do something, outside breathe good. in some fresh air. <laughs> entertain, yeah. yourself entertain yourself without the internet. Yeah. Try to at, yeah, at try least it. once a week. Look I don't away know. from the blue once a week, light. Maybe. Look away from the blue light. Don't yeah. go towards the blue light. <laughs> like Enter- a moth to flames. Enter- honestly. Entertain you yourself. Just hurting yourself. Do, do yeah. you have a is there a ukulele sitting in your room that you maybe Probably haven't touched not. for a few weeks? People just don't have ukuleles lying yeah, around. Someone might. Like some people I do. Someone might just have a ukulele. Or a basement or something. Yeah, okay, my know. sister does. What, I know some people guitar? do. But what, what about that drum set? The piano? But any, okay. anything you have that, an instrument. How about that book you got for Christmas that you didn't read yeah. for years ago? Right? Things book. that don't rely on the internet could potentially be more productive than things that do rely on the internet. And that's just general. I mean, obviously potentially, reading... You said potentially, so uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. yes. Reading, you can do on the internet. I Actually, I encourage you to read things on the internet more than you read paper books because save the trees. But... Meditation is entertaining. Meditation is a form of entertainment? Entirely. But it's fine. I think we nailed it on entertainment, and I really hope that everyone listening enjoyed this episode of Time for Anything. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. We will catch we'll you in the next time. We'll see you next, next time. Bye. Bye.